Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Tell me about Marcus as a little boy. Did he always know that he wanted to play basketball? Or did you always know? I did not always know. But um, it kind of runs in the family, you know. Um, his dad and his uncle spent a lot of time in the gym when he was a little boy. And from the time he was a toddler, you know, he'd go to the gym with them on Saturdays with this backpack on his back. And he and his cousin would run around, you know. Um, when he was big enough and old enough, they'd play ball on the other end while the guys were running down, you know, playing full court. Um, as soon as he was tall enough and old enough, you know, he became, began playing ball himself. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the first team that he played on, his uncle Jason was the coach. It was a YMCA team. And uh, he was like fourth grade playing with sixth graders, you know. And during that time, every week, I had to go to Dick's and buy a new headband, a new mouthpiece, you know, all this stuff so that he could look super cool while he was playing ball. But um, it's just kind of always been something that, you know, he loved. Yes. So the, um, the title Dallas Royalty. Tell me about dad and, and two uncles. Tell me about, because they played, right? Yes, okay. they did. But um, actually, my father-in-law, during that time would still go to the gym and he was a legend you know from being in the gym and playing ball and raining threes on everybody so even though my husband and his brothers would go to the gym and pretty much run the gym on saturdays every now and then my father-in-law would come in too and shoot a couple of baskets of course he wasn't running up and down the court but he'd come in and shoot these deep threes and have everybody in awe you know, and um, like I said, the Sassers have played high school ball in the DFW area, so they're, they're very well known. Yes. I hear the term Dallas royalty. Mm -hmm. when, do you think that that is um, a good term to, to talk about? The, I the do. Um, Dallas Fort Worth produces a lot of great athletes. Um, we've had a lot of great basketball players come out of the area, but the Sasser name is just well known. Uh, like I said, from my father-in-law to my brother-in-law, my husband, and now uh, my son and my nephew. Mm -hmm. So the name is just well known, you know, around the area. And I think it is appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Where would you say Marcus got his gene, the genes from, the DNA? De Are you athletic? Did no. You? Okay. No. <laughs> I am a girly girl, okay? <laughs> So definitely from his dad and granddad and uncles. Now my mom and my dad did play ball, but definitely from his dad and, and grandfather and great-grandfather. Wow. Mm -hmm. How do you think that just the difference, do you think that you and your husband are different parenting as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you think that was a, was a balance for Marcus's basketball career so do you, do you think that one of you pushed him more so than the other or one of you um you know listened after games versus say okay this is what you need to do tell me about the mm -hmm. dynamics so i'm mom so i'm always gonna be on your side okay <laughs> but um dad you know having played ball is a little bit more critical but in a loving way um he believes in hard work um, he believes in, you know, doing what you need to do. He believes in putting in extra. So 5 a.m. workouts were not unusual for Marcus. You know, his dad would get him up. Let's go to the gym. Let's get in one-on-one -on -one time before you go to practice and work out, you know, with your peers and your teammates or whatever. Um, and he always told him, you just have to work hard. Like, you cannot stop. While you're at home sleeping or playing on your game or trying to talk on the phone to a little girl, Somebody else is out there working on their game, getting better. So if this is what you want, you have to put the work in. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in that too, but I was there for more of the emotional support. Um, you know, because a lot of peer pressure and things come along with it as well and disappointments. So, you know, I was there for that, you know, but I spent a little bit of time in the gym with him. I caught myself, you know, going and gardening sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that did go over so well, but, but I, you know, I was there. I was yeah. there. I'm just a cheerleader. Yes. <laughs> but he got his instincts from mom, right? Of course. Definitely that. <laughs> Smart. Definitely that. <laughs> okay. Tell me about a, a pivotal story, a story that stands out to you uh, that may have, you know, really shaped the kind of player that he is today. Does something like that stand out to you? Well... I think I have two stories. So one, he was younger, like elementary, and he was playing ball and his dad was like the assistant coach on this team. And they had their first game. 
and his dad is getting on him and he's fussing and Marcus has always been the kind of kid that we know what you can do but unless I push you you're gonna do just enough okay mm -hmm. so his dad is fussing at him and he's getting on him in the game and just being a little bit more critical of him than the other kids so we're in the car and we're headed back home after the game and he's like Mama, I don't want to play no more. Daddy made me sick. I'm the only one here out there fussing at and this and this and this and this. So I told my husband right then, I said, listen, if he wants to quit, you can't coach anymore. <laughs> at least not him. This is not for you. I know he likes this. He's a great ball player. This is it. You will not coach this team anymore, okay? And so dad didn't coach anymore, you know, <laughs> at least not officially. Right. Um, and Marcus continued to play ball. And then uh, another time, he was in high school now, he's like uh, going into the 11th grade and he's playing on this summer team and he's not, you know, playing ball the way the coach wants him to. He's just out there kind of fitting in and, you know, just kind of going along. Mm -hmm. And the coach is like, I don't understand this. I've never seen a sasser pass the ball so much. Sasser shoot. So Marcus got mad and he go down in the next couple plays and I mean, he's just letting them rain. <laughs> And the coach said, time out, time out. And he said, that's how Sasser's play. Do you hear me? You shoot the ball. And I was like, okay. okay. And I think that kind of helped him to understand, like, I am a shooter. And mm -hmm. while I'm a team player, I need to take my shots as well, right. you know. Right. But um, it was just funny. I, I just really oh. think that kind of helped him come into his own and understand, like, listen, do you not know who you are? Do you not know who your family is? This is how you guys dominate. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be selfish to be mm -hmm. unselfish, Just right? a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great story. Um, okay, so let's go to high school. Tell me about high school. How did, he, how did you watch him grow in high school? Was he confident at the, at the very beginning as a freshman, or did that slowly come about? Um, mm -hmm. Did he get hurt in high school? Um, he did have an injury. So freshman year, he played freshman ball. Sophomore mm -hmm. year, he got moved to the varsity team. But his junior year, we transferred schools. So he went to Red Oak where his uncle was the coach. And I think that is where he truly blossomed. His uncle already recognized the talent in him and he knew what he had, but he helped him to, you know, kind of mold it and be confident in it. You know what I'm saying? He gave him the ability to play to his full potential. Um, he, he, you know, implemented lots of plays to help Mar Jr. learn, like, I can do more than this. And I think that was a pivotal point, you know, in his career. Um, he did get hurt his junior year. Um, he had an ankle injury for a short period of time and um, they, you know, kind of didn't go as far as they would have hoped to, but they did make it to the playoffs that year. So um, we're very proud of him, yeah. very proud. Was that hard coming home after the game, after the lights and he's here at home, you know, and you have these moments together what do you say to him in those difficult moments? Well, the high school injury was not like as bad as the injury he had last year. Of course, that was season ending surgery. Um, that was tough. Mm -hmm. That one was tough. Um, when I got the call from the team doctor, I mean, I broke down. And when he called me, he was hysterical, in tears. Mm -hmm. But by the time he got to the house, I was like, listen, come home. And we were at my brother's house in uh, Tumball. Mm -hmm. And so I said, come home. And by the time he got to the house, I'd had my moment. I had gotten myself together and my family just rallied around him. My husband and I stayed in Houston for about a month um, while he had his surgery and recovered a little bit. But I continued to remind him of who we are and whose we are. I mean, we believe in God, we believe in the power of prayer. I believe in faith and so does he. And so I reminded him of all those things. God did not put this talent in you. He did not bring you this far to leave you, you have so much more to do. Your story is not over. So I know, no, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> so, you know, I just continued to remind him of that. And um, he has a couple of different, you know, tattoos on him, you know, trust in the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. lean not to that on understanding, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I just told him, I said, you have to remember all of these verses that you have on you, finish your race. You know, I'm just like, listen, believe, trust, don't, don't give up. And when I tell you, he came back and he worked his butt off. And my husband and I sat right here and we watched him in the G League Combine. And oh my God, I said, my baby is back. He is back with the vengeance. He is ready. 
And I was so proud, I was happy, I felt blessed, you know, I was relieved and, and humbled, you know, that he could come back and I think he shocked the world. Nobody expected him to come back at all last year. And to see him play the way he did in that combine and then get an invite to the NBA combine was just awesome. Yeah. yeah. So he made the decision mm -hmm. not to continue down that path. He wanted to come back to Houston one more year. Tell me about that. Tell me about his freshman mm -hmm. year, sophomore year, junior year. Mm -hmm. This is the year. So freshman year, COVID cut short. Sophomore year, he had an amazing year. He did phenomenal in the Final Four game, I'm sure you saw. Um, junior year, he come back, you know, he's hurt. So now we're down to the decision, do I stay in the NBA draft process or do I go back to school? And dad and I sat him down and we said, listen, we are so blessed. We are so fortunate. We both have really good jobs. You are not in a position to where you have to make a choice to provide for your family. We're good and we've got you. It's your choice whatever you want to do. Now, in my heart, I wanted him to get that degree. Dad is like, we can get back, go back and get a degree anytime, right? I was like, no, I want him to get that degree, you know. So we said, we're praying for you, and you're a young man. You have to make this decision because whatever decision you make, however things turn out, you need to be okay with that. You need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror every day. And he made the decision to go back. Marcus loves Houston. He loves his teammates, you know, and the atmosphere, the fans and everybody, you know, just loving on him and stuff. And after that final four run, I think he really wanted an opportunity to go back and play with his teammates and try to, you know, give it a shot, especially with everything being in Houston, final four and championship this year. Yeah. yeah. How, how does that make you feel as a mom to, to see him in, you know, injured and then come back and everything just kind of li aligning so perfectly. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so close, you, you, can, you can taste it for him. It's God. I mean, I could tell you a lot of things, but at the end of the day, this is God's plan for him. This, this is his path. And I've always told him, whatever he has for you is for you. Nobody, nothing, nothing can stop it. It's, it's yours. And if you just follow him, stay in line, whatever he has for you is the most good and perfect thing for you. And this is just part of his path. You're gonna make me cry. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Tell me about when he visited Houston. We'll kind of go back a little bit. When he visited Houston um, to, to see if he wanted to go there, if he wanted to play there, had he met Coach Sampson? Mm -hmm. What did you think? You could feel the, the family dynamic from the moment we got there. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing we did was went to Coach's office and had lunch with you know he and his staff. And we kind of got to know each other a little bit or whatever. And um, we did our tour and he met the, the guys and things. And it was Marcus's birthday weekend. And coach and the players and his family, he had us all at his house and he had a birthday dinner for Marcus. They found out his favorite foods and they ordered food in and had a big birthday cake and they sang happy birthday to him. And that was special. You know, mm -hmm. I know that teams go out of their way when you go on recruiting trips, you know, to try to pull you in. But you could feel it. You could literally feel it. And I tell the story all the time, you know, usually on recruiting trips, guys are trying to go see what's going on in town. They're trying to go to the club. They're trying to go party. I want to show you the best Houston has to offer. And Galen Robinson asked him, did you bring your shoes? Did you bring your sneakers? And he said, I keep mine with me. And they went to the gym that night and they played ball all night long. And so I was like, I knew he would love this. I knew when, when that happened, I knew that he would love it. And uh, they really made us feel like a family on that visit. And, and that, was, that was it. Like, mm -hmm. there was nothing else to be said. What do you think about Coach Sampson? Um, I think Coach Samp is old school. And uh, he's won a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's accomplished a lot. And um, he brings a lot. He, he teaches solid foundation. Um, he brings out the best in you. 
It may not always be in a way that you're you're happy with, but you know, usually to get to our best self, we have to go through some things. You understand? And I think being at the University of Houston and going through some of the problems and the obstacles that he's faced, and you know, having to really dig deep has really helped him to mature into a great young man. Yeah. So when uh, a parent, I can imagine, leaves their you know child away at college, you you mm -hmm. you hope that the coach and the staff and the team, like you said, feels like a family and really cares for your son. Do you feel when you left him, when you dropped him off, did you feel that that was immediately that connection? Um, I did. Um, coach Brooks, who was one of the assistant coaches at the time, was the coach that was assigned to Marcus. And he knows my husband's family. And um, he did a really good job of keeping us informed of how Marcus was progressing and when he felt like he wasn't doing his best or he may have been in a little bit of slump and he may have needed a little motherly love or a little talking to or whatever, you know. Um, but, but the school has done that. Um, they do a really good job of communicating and let you know how your kid is doing and what's going on. But we have a really good relationship with Marcus and I'm thankful for that. Um, he's going to always call home and tell mom and dad how things are. And he has an older brother, so I'm thankful that when he doesn't talk to us, he'll at least tell his brother what's going on and, and how things are, you know. Yeah. Um, did you notice a difference in the way that he maybe was working out or eating, I guess, in the beginning of his basketball career to this past, before this senior season? Was he... Did you see him kind of change his mindset or maybe his dedication or maybe his workouts or ordering food? Um, yeah, um, he's always been a junk eater, you know, <laughs> but, you know, and he still likes junk some, but he surprises me, you know, a lot of times now he say, mom, I don't eat like that that much anymore. You know, <laughs> um, he didn't used to like vegetables. He'll at least eat vegetables and salads now, you know. So it's kind of, you know, up and down. When he's around family and there's good food being cooked, you know, he'll eat that. And when he comes home, you know, mom, can you make my pasta or can you make my banana pudding or whatever it is that he wants, you know. But um, the work ethic has always been there. I just think that um, the facility that Coach Samp has afforded those players at U of H is top notch. And having all of that at his disposal just gave him a better opportunity to work even more and even harder. But the work ethic was always there. In fact, I remember his freshman year, they had to kick him out of the gym because he was in there just all the time. And it's like, Marcus, not so much. You know, give your body a rest. We have practice times, you know, whatever, but not so much. But I think he was just so excited and just so eager to work hard and to do a good job. And, and he's always been that way. Before he left, he'd go take runs at 10 o'clock at night. He'd go work out in the morning. He'd come home, shower, change, get a little bit to eat, maybe take a nap. He's back out in the afternoon. And I'm like, where are you going? I'm going to the gym. He lives in the gym. Wow. Yeah. So Coach Sampson, I, I read that calls him um, a, the quiet assassin on mm. the court. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of talking. Uh, he just does what he has to do, and he mm -hmm. he scores or he leads his team. Um, what do you think about that 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 title that coach gave him? I think that is the perfect title. Um, he doesn't talk a lot of noise, and he's that player that he'll have six points, and you'll look up and you're like, when did he get 25? You know, and that's just how he plays. Like you know. Um, he, he's a leader, but he leads by example. You know, he doesn't do, he does, he has a lot of love for his teammates, but he doesn't do a lot of talking, but he leads by example. And so the, the silent assassin is perfect. That is definitely Marcus. Mom will do all the talking for you. <laughs> That's what I want to know. How are you at games? How are you at games, mom? I am loud. Everyone would know that I'm Marcus's mom, okay? Yeah. And I always ask him, like, can you hear me? You know, he's like, yes, mom. I can always hear you, okay? Because I'm like, go, more, more, let's go. You know, that's just my thing. And I'm like, yes, you got this. Come on, baby. Yeah. You know, when I see that he's not shooting or maybe he's gotten a little bit discouraged, I'm like, let's go, more, more, let's go. You know, 
So yes, I am. I am that loud mom. mom. You need to know that mom is here. Okay. <laughs> yes, always. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is great. Okay, is there anything specific that you say to him if he's having a bad day or he's unsure or he had a bad game? Mm -hmm. Do you go into anything? Sometimes parents will talk about what happened at, on the court, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you do so that as a mom? First, I always want to know what was going on. You know, what was the deal today? Were you tired? Were you not feeling so well? Were you not in a rhythm? You know, what's going on? And then after that, I'm like, listen, this is your time. When you're on the court, that's your signature. So let's block everything out. Let's do what we have to do and let's get it, you know? And then I remind him of what he told me the day we dropped him off at school and I'm like barely able to make it to the car cause I'm boohooing, you know? And uh, he says, he hugged me and he said, mom, this is just a pit stop, you know? I'm getting ready to go to the NBA. And I'm like, oh. You know, that made it even worse. So now when you have these bad days or you're in a slump or whatever, mom needs to remind you, you're supposed to be getting to the NBA. This is a pit stop. Let's get on with it. Okay. You know, <laughs> a little gentle nudge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. NBA. What do you think, mom, about, oh my goodness. So this is a pit stop. The next mm -hmm. stop is the draft and then, you know, National League, what what goes through your mind when you think about that for your son? <sighs> I'm excited. I am. I'm nervous. You know, um, it's a dream come true for him, and nothing makes a parent more proud than to see their kids work so hard for something, and it it, it just be it's right there, you know. And as much of a fan as I am, I'm still amazed. Like literally, every time I turn my TV on and I go to ESPN and, and my child's picture is there. You know, I'm amazed when I go to the internet and social media and I'm seeing all these pictures of him and I'm seeing people showing him love. And I mean, I'm, I'm still shocked four years later and I am still in shock and awe. But um, the biggest thing I feel is humility. Um, I tell people all the time that when you have kids that play AAU ball and you spend your summers in the gym, you see thousands of kids playing ball that all have the same dream. But there are only so many D1 schools, there are only so many scholarships, and only so many kids are going to make it, you know, to play professional ball in the NBA. And to see him right there, it's humbling. Mm -hmm. It is very humbling. Okay, so I'm sure there's parents watching. They're going to be watching this interview. They, they're going to want to know maybe any advice or secrets or anything that you can tell parents of athletes that, I mean, your son is getting top athlete in the country, right? Like right now, mm -hmm. top of the world. How do you, how do you do that as a parent? Um, you love your kids, you support them, and you do the best that you can to provide them with the resources that are needed to excel. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids have a dream. A lot of them want to go to the NBA. A lot of them work hard to get to their point, and parents, you know, send them to camps and get them personal trainers and things like that. And it's, it's not for everyone, but love your kids support your kids and and just give them what they need um sometimes that even means being honest with yourself and your kid you know um sophomore year marcus did not originally play summer ball because he was not giving it his all and i was giving him my all my every weekend my every dollar we were giving everything we had for him to play ball and he was just out there just going along, okay? And I said, that's it, no more. You get no more of my time, you get no more of my money. You are not ready. That summer, Marcus found his way to the gym. Whoever he could catch a ride with, whoever would open the gym for him, he put in the work. Mm -hmm. And so the coach that I told you that called time out, that coach 
open his gym and let Marcus play and work out and train. And he had a team and he asked, could Marcus come and play with them one night? So my husband went to the game. I said, I'm not going. I meant what I said. I'm done. And my husband comes home from the game that night and he says, babe, he's, he's ready. I said, okay. He said, they want to know, can he play tomorrow? I said, I guess I'll go see. So I go to the game the next day, and Marcus is ready. He's, back. He's, he's put the work in, and now he's showing me that I won't take your time, your resources, your love, all the things that you and dad have provided for me and sacrificed for me to do this. I won't take that in vain anymore. And from that day to this one, he is not. So sometimes parents just need to step back and yes. let their child figure it out on their yes. own. Yes, yes. You, sometimes you have to love them from a distance, still be there, but not be so hands-on. Sometimes so that you can see as well. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You should write a book. <laughs> okay. Um... Mm. Did you yell at him when he was injured to stay off his foot? <laughs> yeah, I did. Because Marcus may not look like it, but he is heavy, okay? <laughs> and once we got home from the hospital and we got him upstairs, I'm like, do you have everything you need? Because mom and dad can't continue to help you up and down these stairs. You're heavy. <laughs> And uh, he wanted to come down one day. You know, he was tired of being stuck upstairs. Mm -hmm. And we brought him down and let him come sit down and talk to the family and, you know, get some sunshine. And I look up and he's on that scooter and he's outside and he's shooting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Marcus, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't have my foot on the ground. I've got it on the scooter. I'm not, I'm not putting any weight on it. I'm like, Marcus Jr. I said, if you don't let it heal properly, you will have yeah. damage forever. But he was just so determined. Mm -hmm. He was so determined. A couple of weeks later, we came back home and went back to work. And he went back to the school, went back to campus. And he was sneaking in the gym. He was sneaking in the gym, <laughs> putting up shots. And, you know, he would go back to the doctor. And then I would go back to Houston because I said, I need to see what the surgeon is saying because I don't think you're going to tell me the truth. You're just ready to play. <laughs> And every week he's trying to rush it along because he's thinking, if my guys can just hold on to Sweet 16, I'll be back. Mm -hmm. If my guys can hold on to Elite 8, I'll mm -hmm. be back. You know, he's pushing and pushing mm -hmm. and pushing. But the surgeon is like, you're not ready. Yeah. You're not ready. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to risk you re-damaging. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's make sure you're healed properly. But he was definitely sneaking in the gym, putting in work. And the way I found out he was putting weight on it, he sends his dad and I a video one day of him running in the gym and dunking. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. That's Marcus. <laughs> oh that's Marcus. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let me see. I think that's, that's pretty much all I have. That was amazing. Is there anything else? that you would like to add? Not really. Like I said, I am just, I'm, I'm honored and blessed and proud and excited for him. You know, we continue to pray for him and pray over him and with him. Mm -hmm. um, always been supportive. Like I said, his older brother, that's, that's been his real coach all his life. Listen, number 12 out there, what you need to do with him? You need to do this, this, and this, and this. And then when you bring the ball up next time, you know, so he's always telling what he needs to do, the things he needs to correct. Yeah. Um, so that, that's that been his true coach yeah. all his life. And uh, his younger brother, my youngest, you know, he just, you know, tells him, I'm proud of you, you know, congratulations or good luck, you know. But he has a strong support system, you know, in our family. And we're really proud of him. Um, all the accolades and things, awards that he's, you know, earned over the years, you know, he's so deserving. Mm -hmm. He is so deserving. Um, sweet kid, really, really humble, really, really humble, you know, um, and a great team player, not selfish at all. He just loves the game mm -hmm. and, and he wants to win, you know. So we're just super proud of him, yeah. very proud. Thank you so much. Of course. Oh, so good. So of good. Of course.